Hi, it's Jamie, and I wanted to show you platters today. Um, in our class, we just did some, and um, you may have uh, used before rolls of clay and created a, a platter in the shape that you liked, um, but I want to introduce this material to you. This is, um, I got this at the hardware store, and it's to cover half-inch pipe from the cold. So it's very, it's, it's foamy, it's flexible, and so we cut these into various shapes to make platter sizes. So uh, I'm going to show you how to do one and um, show you some examples from class. Now I originally got my idea from this shape right here. I really like this, but I wanted it to be a little bit bigger. Um, more platter shape, so a little bit lower as well. So what did I ended up doing is I copied it to a piece of paper and then I scanned it in and then I made something bigger. <laughs> so this is uh, the shape from inspired by this piece here and here's the, the shape that I came up with, the size. Um, I then got a piece of cardboard and I took this material so I traced it on the cardboard, I took this material, and I went around and taped it and cut it to be this shape. So um, that was my inspiration. Those, these are some of the patterns that my students came up with, just your basic square, which is a nice size platter, uh, and um, rectangular shape, <laughs> a circle shape. Um, so this circle, circle shape is kind of interesting. Um, you can get pieces from like the floral store like this um, and use this as well. Now the benefit of using this is this is softer and it gives way. So when the clay shrinks, if you have a little bit of overhang, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Whereas here it would just crack because this is so hard. So, um, but anyways, this is kind of fun to use too. You don't you know, it's a slump mold, so it'll shake, shrink inward if you just cut it properly. Um, and that brings me over to some other shapes. <laughs> so over the years, I've collected these and used them uh, in my ceramic work. Um, and one of the things that I do also for slump is, um, so this is a paper mache product from Daris. Daris. Ah. Anyways, um, you can use uh, corks. Um, or these foamy things that I get from the craft supply store and I tape them on here and then I just drape you know I put plastic down and then I drape the clay into the shape and I go that way so that's that's another way of using shapes that are around you to do slump forms so I'm not going to show you these guys today but it's pretty simple concept So what I have here is a new shape that I wanted to create um, and all I did is I folded a piece of lightweight tar paper into quarters and then I cut the shape and um, I'm happy with this so I'm going to go with this shape and um, all I did is I took a piece of hard cardboard and um, I, put the, I put the shape down here and then I took a pencil or a sharpie and I drew around it to know where the sides are. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut my form. So generally what I like to do is to secure the form before cutting it. Um, and I'm all, so let me go ahead and do that now. I found that using a sharp knife with a serrated edge works really well. So there's my shape I'm going to try out. Uh, I'm going to roll some clay and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back, um, and I'm gonna. I prepared my slab. So to prepare this, I'm going to just put down a piece of dry cleaner plastic, and I'm pushing it into it. I'm not gonna leave it flat on top like this. I'm actually gonna push it into the form. This is a little bit of a quarter over a quarter inch slab um, that I've done. Um, 
and I've laid it on here. So I've textured it with, um, I love using papers that I find. Um, and so I bought this piece of paper at Flax and I've treated it with a polyurethane to make it more water resistant. So it makes it a little bit more stiff and it lasts longer, the paper. <clears throat> So here is my um, form draped on here and um, before I do the drop, I'm just going to cut a little bit of the excess off. Okay, so my next step is to actually let gravity do its work here and I'm just going to take it and I'm going to drop it. Uh, so I think this is good. This is where I want it to be. Um, the next step is um, is going to be trimming it up some. So here's um, some suggestions about that. Um, I, depending on the clay that you're using, you might want to just let this set up for a bit until the clay becomes firmer before cutting it. What I found is if I cut too soon, then the clay, the clay slumps even more. So I kind of like the shape that it's going on here now. Um, so I might want to wait for it to set up before cutting. Um, so it all depends on the kind of clay you're using. I'm using Sculpture Raku and I know how it's going to behave. So I'm going to go ahead and do my um, cut now and I'm going to show you how I do that. All right, so um, what I do, it's kind of a low tech way of finding out where to cut. Um, and it does two things for me. Um, so I've noticed that if I have deep textures along the rim, sometimes that encourages cracking. So I like to kind of smooth out my rims a little bit. So um, the smoothing and then the finding your line is one of the tricks here. So I'm just going to go around the top of the form with my roller, my pony roller. So it's easy to do this step if you have texture on your piece. Um, so you can see here a line has been created where I ran the pony roller. So you could either cut the inside line or you could cut the outside line. So I'm going to cut the outside line. If I cut the inside line now, then it would sink further and I don't want that. But I'm going to cut the outside line and then later on maybe I'll trim away more, I don't know. But um, that's how I find my line, is just keeping it straight and rolling along the edges. So now I have this cool new shaped tray. Um, I'm going to probably fuss with the uh, edges for a bit. Um, this right here got a little bit off, so what I'll end up doing is using a sure form when this is set up enough to go around and smooth this out. Um, but for right now, all I need is time, and time is going to help this set up. And then as soon as it's leather hard, I can just put a board on top, flip it over, take the form off, and then redo. So um, it's a fun way to make platters. If you haven't tried it yet, I encourage you, and uh, have fun. See you next time.